Um, and so this year we're including four sessions with local presenters, which I'm super excited about, um, who do, did youth-led research um, and boiled it down to some really tangible practices that youth said matter to them. Um, so kind of like the Castle Center for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning, they have three signature practices. They say warm welcome, engaging um, practices, I think, and um, uh, optimistic closure. Um, so kind of like those, we're developing our own local practices informed by young people um, through youth-led research. Um, and we want them also to be things that everybody can do. So, so um, informed by theory, but, but really practical things that you all can do um, that young people say matter. Um, so we're really excited here um, to have Brianna Bohr from Bayview today. Um, and next week, I think Colleen Hayes is gonna share. Um, and then Billy Joe and Fred Martinez from, um, from MSC are gonna share later on the summer. So I'm really excited about that and appreciate all of you taking the time to join today and really Brianna for kicking us off. Um, appreciate it and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, Nathan. Susan, do you have anything you wanna to add to that or does that sum it up? Um, no, it sounds great. Uh, yeah, just welcome, welcome. Um, sorry, it took us a little bit longer to kick off than we thought. And because of that, it might be that we're stretching a little bit into September. I don't wanna crowd people. I know you're gonna start up those summer camps. And so time is gonna become like something that you, you need more of not to fill more with. Um, do be looking for uh, an email with, from me coming up with a survey. Um, for all of us, we do get some funding to do this professional learning. And in exchange for that, we're looking for y'all's information, opinions, um, kind of experiences with social emotional learning. And so even though we're on the beginning side of this, um, we know you came to this with already some understanding of social emotional learning uh, and we're not. And we want to capture how where that is for you all. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and then um, we are going to record this. We'll share this. So if you loved it and you want to share it with your coworkers, you'll be able to do that too. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for joining. Oh, thanks, Susan and Nathan. So my name is Brianna, and my pronouns are they or she, and I work at the Bayview Community Center. Um, I'm the Youth Advocacy and Support Coordinator there. And uh, my role is basically to do anything I can do to support youth mental health. Uh, and that includes their social and emotional well-being. Uh, I would love to, I would love to hear from you all as we get started here. Uh, you know, if you're if your hair is done and you're ready to be on camera, I would love to see your face. Um, but would love to just hear from everybody, camera on or not. Uh, who you are, like what's your name, what are your pronouns, um, and where you work in with youth. And uh, I'm thinking uh, most of the youth that contributed to what I'm going to share with you all today are in middle school. And so just, I think for our check in here, I want to invite us to take a moment, if it's if it's not too scary to think back to your middle school self tell you what our time together is going to look like, and then I'll jump in. So uh, I'm going to talk and share some, <clears throat> excuse me, share some slides for a little bit. And then there will be some time for questions and conversation. Um, and then I'm hoping for us to break into some smaller groups uh, to, I think that's really where conversations can happen on Zoom. And I have some questions to prompt that, that, uh, that, talking to each other. Um, and then we'll come back together and just see if there's anything to share from those groups, have some more time for questions, and then we'll say goodbye. So uh, yeah, we've got about an, a little over an hour together left. So um, I, I I'm happy to start with that question and just hearing from all of you ways that you felt supported and loved in middle school, because that's exactly <clears throat> what uh, I asked middle schoolers and some elementary schoolers and some high schoolers at the Bayview Community Center. Um, and I really wanted to hear from them, how is their social and emotional health supported at Bayview? How can we support it better? Um, and I'll, I'll start sharing my screen now. going. Okay, can everybody see that? 
All right, thumbs up. Great. So before I could ask youth uh, what we do at Bayview to support their social and emotional health, I needed to, I really wanted to get on the same page with them about what social health means to them and what emotional health means to them, kind of create a common definition. Um, and oh, before I keep going, just if anybody wants to jump in, I can't really see all of you, but if you wanna unmute yourself and jump in and ask me a question at any point, you're more than welcome. Um, so, so Bayview Youth, um, they said that social health to them looks like communicating and connecting with their family and their friends and being with each other through the challenges and the fun parts of life. Um, and they said that emotional health looks like being aware of your emotions. Um, probably most of the most of the middle schoolers didn't say that part. They said um, that emotional health looked like feeling positive and happy. Um, the, the high schoolers brought in that idea of being more aware of your emotions as part of emotional health. Um, and then the youth of all ages from elementary school to high school talked about in different ways, having what they need to feel comfortable. So whether that's homework help or when they get hurt, having someone to help them get a Band-Aid or um, having food when they're hungry, um, just all, all different things that they need to feel comfortable. Um, and I wanna give you an idea of who, before I tell you more about what they said, just who are the, a, a little bit about two parts of the identities of the people that I was talking to. So again, ages ranging from probably like third grade to uh, junior in high school. And then um, here's a, a makeup of their gender and ethnicity uh, that they wrote into an open box. So about 50% of the people said that they identify as a girl or female um, and the other half uh, or almost half same male or that they identify as a boy. Um, and then a small portion there saying no answer. Um, and then about half of the youth that I talked to are Hmong. And then the other half is made up of youth who are African-American, Mexican, Vietnamese, or who chose not to answer. Um, so this, this next slide is gonna share, just we asked them before we talked about, you know, what we do at Bayview to help youth feel socially and emotionally healthy. Uh, we asked them how socially healthy they were feeling in some different spaces. And you can see um, at home and at school, or uh, sorry, at home and at Bayview, um, close to are feeling socially healthy. Uh, about a quarter of them are not so sure. Um, and then uh, at school, it's, it's a lot less than that, only about 50% saying that they're feeling socially healthy. A lot of them not sure, and a really small percentage of them saying that they're socially, feeling socially unhealthy at school. Um, that kind of continues and intensifies when we talk about emotional health. Um, very similar at Bayview and at home, very similar numbers there of how emotionally healthy they're feeling in those places. And then at school, we jump to, you know, the same smaller amount of youth feeling emotionally healthy and unhealthy, and then a really big portion of them saying that they're not sure if they feel emotionally healthy at school. So to find out a little bit more about that, we asked them, what do you think impacts your social and emotional health? And they mostly talked about school. And when they talked about school, they said words like, quizzes, grades, presentations. Uh, they said they were anxious and nervous and stressed and felt pressure. Uh, they talked about peers impacting their social and emotional health, uh, tests, homework. Somebody talked about staying up late. Um, and, and just to clarify, we didn't say what are things that impact your health negatively or positively. We just kind of asked generally. Um, and then uh, second to school, they talked about community quite a bit. Um, and they mentioned Bayview, their peers, their friends, just their general surroundings, the people, uh, their family, and their pets as uh, parts of their lives that impact their social and emotional health. Am I Brianna? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did did you find I'm I'm intrigued that teachers didn't show up in oh, school. Yeah. Did, yeah. Any thoughts or 
I wonder, you know, uh, I'm trying to think, I'm just like thinking back if that was in there and I just didn't catch it, right? Because I, I'm the one who combed through all of this data. So there's room for human error in that, but I'm, that's why I'm pausing for a second. But I, people did not mention teachers, but it's surprising because when youth are talking about their days at the end of a school day, they talk about teachers, <laughs> right? That definitely comes up, um, I guess, just in this, well, you know, maybe the way that we worded the questions or something didn't lend itself to that. But I think that would be uh, probably a really true one to add. Huh. Thanks. Yeah. And so th then they also mentioned COVID, their physical health, uh, thinking about the future and work that they do as other things that impact their social and emotional health. Um, so I took all of what they said and I, I tried to find some themes in it. Oh, well, I asked them another question and, and I found some themes in that. Um, I asked them, what are some ways that teens, that you feel like your social and your emotional health are supported at Bayview? Um, and they said a lot of different things. And then from the themes of what they said, I've been trying to go through there and, and watch staff at Bayview and talk to staff at Bayview and talk a little bit more with youth and think about what are the things that we do on a daily basis, um, practices that we do that support uh, these things that that youth stay like what are we actually doing that support youth social and emotional health so one thing that so many youth talked about and i was surprised about it because sometimes they complain before we go outside um, but i actually i saw this as a theme in our check-ins too a lot a few people mentioned being outdoors as something that as part of like what made them feel supported and loved um, so youth at bayview said that too and so our first a uh, social and emotional practice is to get outside with young people. Um, this is pretty basic, right? Uh, I'm sure we all do this uh, most days with youth in some way. Uh, and there's a really wide range of ways that we spend time with youth at Bayview outside from playing soccer to putting on big rain boots and exploring a gross pond uh, I didn't, I say gross because I didn't want to get into it, um, but the youth were like all into looking for frogs and seeing what was in there. Um, and, and even with, so, you know, whether you're playing in a courtyard with hula hoops and soccer balls or um, really uh, connecting with nature, you know, all these different ways of being outside have benefits for youth. Um, one thing we tried to do at Bayview this school year was to have even though we go outside every day, we wanted to have one day of the week where we really tried to engage with the natural world with youth, to have times where they maybe would put down their screens, maybe we wouldn't be playing a, a sporting event, um, but more something that gets them really connecting with nature in some way. So this is a picture of youth um, sitting and fishing. This is one of my favorite things to do with them. It's like the closest, I see teens get to meditation, they just sit and wait. <laughs> um, and there's a, a beautiful kind of cloudy sunset on the way in this picture. Um, and then this is the same lake, but when it's frozen. Uh, in this picture, we, we had planned, they have golf clubs in their hands. We had planned to go mini golfing. We were gonna like chop holes in the ice and do like a mini golf course on the ice but it was so bumpy um, and apparently golf clubs are really sturdy. So we just like hammered and chopped at the ice with the golf clubs. Um, they loved it. They didn't wanna leave. We got so far out. Um, and, and the other thing that we did just to, I think this is maybe why youth named this in in answer to this question of, of how can we, how do we support your social and emotional health at Bayview? Um, we asked them each time on this, we did it on Thursdays, each Thursday before we went on an outdoor adventure, we asked them to check in using an emoji. Um, they just got to say, how are they, how are they doing? Which emoji are they most at before we go on our trip and then after? Um, and overwhelmingly, 
um, they, they went uh, toward the smiley face. Um, sometimes they went the other way, but they said, I just don't want to leave. And so now I'm bummed. <laughs> um, so yeah, this was a great way for us to see how that time in nature was impacting the youth and for them to build some awareness of like, how am I feeling before and after I go outside? Oh, this is something that really supports me. Um, so I'll move on to number two here. Uh, this is another pretty simple one, something that we probably do every single day. Youth said that they felt supported at Bayview in their social and emotional health um, by having access to food that they enjoy. And I was, I was kind of surprised. I, I like didn't quite believe it at first. I was like, good food supports your social and emotional health. Um, but as they kept talking, it made a lot of sense, right? One young person said, I didn't used to have a lot of food at home. So this helps me feel, this just like makes me feel calm to have the food that I need. Um, here's a picture of a way that uh, food brings people together, just like standing around at a table and everybody making their own personal pizza. Um, food is also a part of our routine, I'm sure for probably all of us, right? Just we serve, we serve food as, as part of what we do after school. Um, so just a, a daily way for us to come together to socialize and something that's really nourishing, not just physically. Um, and, and so this one, even this is, though this is so basic, for me, this is a, a helpful perspective shift. So instead of serving snack and thinking, okay, let's just get their bodies full of food so they're not crabby or so that, because this is a thing that just needs to happen, people need to eat. Um, really thinking like, oh, this is, this is a time and an activity that helps youth feel cared for. Um, and I think when adults put in that extra, um, have that consciousness of like, oh, this supports youth in more than just a physical way, I think that um, we, can, we can increase the impact of that. Um, so youth also said that uh, time with their friends and staff and having a space to express their feelings and be heard in that were some ways that they feel like their social and emotional health are supported at Bayview. Um, and this might seem like a stretch, but out of that, <laughs> this, this, uh, this practice takes a little more explaining, but one thing we try to do at Bayview is reframe youth behavior sometimes when we're seeing it while also maintaining boundaries. Um, and I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that in the next few slides. Um, at Bayview, we have kind of a common belief among the staff that people act how they feel and that behavior is communication. So even if somebody's not saying, I'm mad, they might be telling you that or showing you that um, by you know, just their, their expression or their body language, but also by their actions, right? Like, somebody throws something on the ground. They're not just um, being destructive, they're, maybe they're mad, right? So they're showing us and communicating how they feel and what they need all the time, maybe not in the most appropriate ways. Um, so an example, and this connects back to um, them saying that, you know, having time with their friends is really nourishing for the teens. Um, what we saw at the beginning of the school year is that the adults, you know, we came in with all these ideas we thought were great, we thought were exciting of how um, we could engage youth after school, these structured activities, right? At the beginning of the school year, when we tried to transition from kind of snack and hangout time, arrival at Bayview time, into let's do a structured activity together, whew, we got the cold shoulders. Um, youth were just kind of, I think, some staff felt like it was disrespectful, you know, like, oh, they're not listening. Oh, we worked so hard on this and they're, you know, they're not into what we were planning. These are really cool ideas. Um, and and uh, so we reframed what was going on there and we wondered, um, you know, what, what are they telling us other than they don't wanna do the activities that we're doing. And what we realized as we listened more to the youth was that, um, a lot of them hadn't been together all day, you know, they share this common experience of living at Bayview, a lot of them have grown up together, 
Um, they're all youth of color. And a lot of times they're going into spaces where they're maybe like the only young, uh, the only Hmong person in a class, right? So coming together and having time to just debrief and chill and be all together is really nourishing for them. Um, and they were showing us maybe not in the most appropriate way, like maybe it seemed kind of rude, but they were being really clear about like, we don't want to do a structured activity. We just want to be together. Um, so we reframed that and, and, and adjusted program to support that. Um, another example that we see every single day is just youth being unkind to their peers, right? Um, somebody's having a, uh, so, so one way to look at that is to, you know, and especially when you see somebody causing harm, it's hard to not maybe be a little frustrated with them. Um, it's easy to be like, oh, that kid is mean, you know? Um, but we try to really reframe that at Bayview and think about, I wonder what's going on for this kid that they're um, causing harm to others, right? They must be really suffering in some way. Um, so, so just to break that down of how we reframe youth behavior, the first thing we do is kind of wonder, I wonder what this young person is communicating or telling me that they need or what they might be feeling when, when they're being rude or doing a mean thing. The second thing that we do um, is maintain import, important boundaries. So um, an important boundary would be, it's not actually okay to hit people or uh, you know say things that really hurt people and cause harm, right? We gotta maintain those boundaries. An example of a not important boundary might be like you, somebody needing to sit in a certain place at a certain time, right? Um, we can let some things go, but maintaining the important boundaries and then helping young people get what they need in a safer or a more appropriate way. So with the teens um, in that example, uh, we shifted our program structure so that what they needed could actually fit within that. And then there wasn't a struggle of do the activity. We don't wanna do the activity. Um, and then uh, with that second example of helping youth get what they need in a safer way, um, you know, having a conversation with a young person that's like, hey, can you tell me what's going on? Yeah, we got to keep everybody safe. So, you know, and, and, and working on to repair whatever harm has been done there, but really sitting with them and coming to a young person who's having a hard time with some compassion um, and wondering, you know, what might have, what might their day or their year <laughs> have been like um, to make them having a hard, uh, be having a hard time that they feel like um, they are, they need to handle situations by hurting other people. Um, so we'll move on to the fourth and a little bit less complex uh, uh, social and emotional health support practice at Bayview. Um, so youth said that uh, they feel supported when they have help when they need it and when we do fun activities and play games. Um, and so I'm going to call this one flexible structures. And what that looks like at Bayview is that we give a lot of choices to youth, maybe not all three of these at once, um, but a lot of what our middle and high school times look like are, uh, you know, at the beginning, right when they come in, time to chill and hang out or do homework. Um, and then maybe the last hour of time, uh, we give them a choice of, we're gonna do uh, homework and quiet hanging out or a structured activity. Um, and just giving them a lot of agency and, and creating activities that youth can socialize while they do them um, have really worked for us here at Bayview. Um, so just to review, these are the, the social and emotional health practices at Bayview. We're getting youth outside, we're having good food and, and knowing that that actually supports their social and emotional health as well as their physical well-being. Um, we're reframing youth behavior, getting curious about um, what's going on for young people when, when they're doing behaviors that we're not so comfortable with. And then we're offering a lot of flexible structures for young people. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing to come back to you here. Um, I want to, that's the end of my slides and talking. Now it's time for us to talk together. 
Um, I would love to hear if anybody has any questions and then we'll we'll jump into some breakout rooms and and talk a little bit about just like ways that, you know, if there's anything that stands out to you from those practices and ways that um, you might be able to integrate some of that into your work at your center or maybe some things you might add. Um, but before we do that, does anybody have any questions? Could you talk any more about how you incorporate flexible structures? Because I know that's something in Middleton that we try to offer choice as much as possible. But of course, we also have all these pressures from all our funders, right, to offer certain programs or get certain numbers of kids in certain programs. And I'm curious how you balance that. I'm so grateful that you said that because I, I meant to say something about that when I was talking to the person who runs the elementary programming and, and just shared this with her um, to get some feedback. She said, oh my gosh, you have to warn people that if they get flexible with their structures, funders are gonna complain <laughs> or they're gonna get stressed out, right? Um, a lot of it has been uh, me working with the, the people who are leading the programs to frame what we're doing in a way to funders that lets them see the value of it. Um, so with our elementary program right, right now, I would say maybe 80% of what we do is um, it's really well framed. There, there is like a structure on the outside of it, but it's not like everybody sit and follow these instructions. Um, we do a lot of open creative play um, with our elementary schoolers specifically. Um, and, and, you know, funders are like, ah, academic success. Ah, like they need more support. Um, in this time. Um, so actually working, working together to put, you know, bring in some research in that says actually creative free play and time outside really supports young people's ability to focus, young people's ability, like it, it supports their social and emotional well-being, their mental health, and all of those things will have, you know, been shown to improve their academic, their academic success. Um, yeah, and the other thing that the elementary program person specifically told me um, was that she picked like two of the important uh, partners that we've worked with, right? A lot of what we do is like having somebody come in to lead a program, an art program or a bike program or something with sports, right? Um, or something with academics. Um, and so I think she picked like two or three of those partners um, and then said no to the rest of them. Um, yeah, so I don't know if that's a satisfying answer, but it's really in how we frame it to the stakeholders. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Brianna, could you share a little bit more about like Bayview and how it's structured? Because it's interesting. I think it's going to be familiar to some folks on the call and and not familiar to others. And so, and it's just helpful to have a sense of you've got a special community there. Yeah, so the Bayview Community Center is actually in the literal center of a little over a hundred townhouses um, where people live. So the youth, uh, they come home from school and they really come to Bayview from school. Some people just like walk right in the door with all their stuff or some people go drop off their backpack at home and come into the center. Um, so I think that's unique about Bayview um, and we have, we work with youth um, in our after school programming who are ages six to 18. Uh, we do a summer youth employment program uh, and, and summer camp and summer fun stuff for teens outside of their youth employment time. Um, and I think my role might be unique there in that um, I work with all of the youth and the program that I coordinate is kind of woven into things. And, and that's uh, a program that's really just trying to um, support staff to support youth in ways that uh, support them better, <laughs> right? Support their social and emotional well being during this. I think it's always hard. Like growing up is always hard, and there are things in life that are hard. And right now is like especially like there are added challenges to the challenges that have always been there. Um, yeah. So is that kind of what you were looking for, Nathan? Cool. Great. Yeah. Oh you my goodness. About, 
Oh, oh yeah, go ahead, Susan. Yeah, you talked about being surprised about get outside and good food. And I, I hear that. Did you get, but it sounds like you've embraced it and you really see how it's connected to social emotional learning. Do you, did you get pushback from leadership or maybe even funders who, you know, were like, no, that's not enough or all the different versions that people could share pushback? Yeah, are you saying, Susan, specifically around these practices? Yeah, around these practices and, and maybe even where you were surprised by these practices. Yeah. Yeah, so these practices as they are stated and written out are in their really fresh form. Um, I've shared them with the youth. The youth have seen some version of the slides that you just saw so that we could engage. I could show it to them and be like, is this right? Did I hear you? Um, and we've continued some conversations there so I could correct some things I had missed or you know, sometimes seeing your own ideas in pictures and in words um, sparks like, oh, and now I have another idea, right? So I've done a little bit of that process with the youth, but the staff at Bayview, apart from little conversations with me, like, hey, I think this is one of our practices. What do you think? Um, they have not seen what you have seen. Uh, but if you go to Bayview, you will see it in action, right? Um, so our, our funders, our uh, the, the director at Bayview, nobody knows these practices written out in this way, but, um, but they can feel them when they go around and into the, uh, into the, the rooms where young people are. Um, there's just kind of a different feeling than there was a year ago. And it's been about a year that we've been working really hard to shift some of the ways that we support young people, knowing that they need a little extra support related to their mental health. I also just want to name because I think if if there is pushback, what's really exciting about this is this is like rigorous youth led research that led to this that was youth led right young people's voices are rarely included in these kind of ways. And it was informed by like Wisconsin Center for Educational Research right in really legitimate ways, and so I think to doubt to doubt this is to doubt you know what young people are saying right matters to them um, and to doubt like. Wisconsin Center for Educational Research, right? Um, so um, I'm really excited about it because it's so it's so rare that we actually um, ask young people, what does social emotional health mean to you and what actually supports it? Um, and now we did and, and, and there's really meaningful practical things that we can actually all do. I had a little bit of wondering around, like clearly you, have programming around being outside around like good food and so is there some programming that you were doing that you thought was contributing to social emotional health that didn't come up that you are now going huh maybe stem doesn't matter <laughs> you know i don't even like you know yeah no <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not that I, not that I can think of. We were really intentional. Um, so part of why we did the one day of outdoor uh, time really intentionally this school year was that there was a social work intern who was really passionate about how do we do um, like therapeutic recreation? How do we get outdoors and make that therapeutic for youth? Um, and so we did that in our upper elementary and teen programming. We had a day a week in each of those groups where we took young people outside. It's pretty unstructured outside time. Like you saw in that picture of them exploring the pond, we just like gave them boots and said, look, a pond. <laughs> there might be frogs in there. And they spent 20 minutes in that pond or, you know. Um, so yeah, and then, you know, they also talked about, I didn't talk too much about this here, um, but uh, youth talked a lot about their relationships with adults at Bayview. Um, and that's, I guess, a harder thing to distill into a practice, um, but important to note that all of the adults, like my role is specifically supposed to include having one-on-one -on -one time with youth to support their mental health. Um, but 
I've, I've seen that's part of my role, but also my role is to make sure youth, some youth have other adults to do that with. Like not all youth are gonna connect with me. Um, and I feel like one thing we do really well at Bayview is that each young person has somebody that they feel like they can go and sit with or talk to. Um, so we do that work together. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna, let's see if this works. I'm gonna put into the chat um, just a reminder of the four practices and then we'll get into some breakout rooms and let's see there we go okay i think that those will oh no it didn't quite work my four is off um i think that the chat will stay with you when you go out into break breakout rooms and susan i think maybe 15 20 minutes like 18 minutes or something in a breakout room um and maybe groups of like four ish um, welcome back oh yay we get to see more people in great so i think the last group has just been called back yeah, so we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, we'll see how much of that time we use, but just curious if there's anything any of the groups want to share, anything that stood out to you or um, the time is ours. Um, I feel like our group really bonded over um, how seriously, like Annie was saying, how seriously middle schoolers take things um, in the moment that they're living in their lives. And like, you know, like a breakup or a friendship, having a bad day is like, you know, really end of the world for them. And we were also talking about like, you know, maybe as a prompt having us like revisit our own diaries or journal entries, or if you kept any written document of your existence in middle school, highly recommend revisiting that. <laughs> um, and kind of like, getting into that mindset of, again, of like how you were perceiving things and seeing things and also how aware you were of things, because you were saying how it's easy to like forget that middle schoolers really do know what's going on and like no way more than we think they do and pick up on the smallest of things. And that's what we went through, but often we forget about that. So it was cool. I just got to do a plug because um, I think that was spurred by the reframing of behavior. Um, and and got us all thinking about how about exactly what um, we just talked about. But we're going to do a session um, sometime. Youth workers, um, bring your diaries, um, read about yourselves in middle school, and discuss. So, um, might be a 7 p.m. session. Um, so we'll 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 be reaching out to see who kept your diary. Um, but I think that'd be a really really interesting, meaningful thing actually to think about. What was I actually like as a middle school? Uh, am I seeing these same things now? Um, I think it'd be pretty cool. Oh wow. Uh, middle school, I remember the Titanic and every sad love song. <laughs> At least the music today is way more empowering. I swear. Or you can just watch the Titanic. <laughs> Bring us back. Brianna, I meant to ask before, is the survey that y'all developed something that is in a shareable state with others? Probably the, I could create a version of it without the answers in it um, that, that people could see kind of the raw the questions that we asked, how we set that up, definitely. Because that, that would be a really easy thing for folks to do. I found that that survey like built relationships. I think when you ask people things, it brings more awareness to them. So I think now youth are thinking about their social and their emotional health a little more. 
so definitely. I also had a diary that you could lock that had kittens on it. Mm -hmm. It was that time period's version of kitten, uh, the videos and the memes and everything, right? All we had was diaries and calendars and things like that. Um, Brianna, also on the survey, did was it only kids who'd been around for a while who you did the survey with, or was it just anyone, even if they had just come for like a week? Yeah, it was our regular attendees. Some of them, two of them had only had been around for like less than a month. Like we usually just have youth who live at Bayview coming to Bayview, but we worked with the school to have uh, a, a pair of two siblings come together, even though they don't live at Bayview. Um, so they were new and their answers are in there, but everybody else is like been there for years, solid attendees. And just for like a scope of it, like, was this 50 kids? Was it 20? Was it, you know? Very few, <laughs> very few. It was all of our regular attending middle and high schoolers and then a few um, elementary schoolers. Uh, which is a very small number, less than 20. Yeah, I, I asked it actually not because of breath. Like, I don't think we build this stuff around breath. We do build it around what keeps some, someone coming, what's the engagement. And so also to see like, how doable is it to try to get youth voice? You know, um, you have a solid group of five kids asking these types of questions can really inform us, you know, in ways that, you know, we might not have been listening for. Definitely. And I sat, I sat down with the youth one-on-one -on -one, um, or sometimes two-on-one. -on -one. They were like, let me do this with my friend. And I was like, of course. Um, and then some of them wanted to just type in their answers. They didn't want to talk about it. Um, so they got to do it solo. Um, but yeah, I, I, I thought that that worked really well and they were really excited to contribute and have, I just like heard things that I had never heard from young people, like uh, just giving them a space where I'm like, hey, I value your voice. I wanna know how, how you define this um, seemed empowering or seemed like some, they, they were really engaged in that. Yeah, and I just wanna say in my group too, uh, one thing that we talked a little bit about at the end um, had to do with anger. I don't really have any answers, but I just noticed that we, there was like a common theme of like at, at most of our centers, um, or all of our centers, um, youth, uh, really struggling with how to navigate their anger. So wondered if, if other people in this group were feeling that too. Um, but it seems like, Seems like there are some old resources about anger management, um, but there might be kind of a gap in like what's something that's just like a curriculum or something that's like easy to take and, and use to support youth when they're angry. Um, yeah, just noticing a gap there in resources. Yeah, I think that's a really good thing to bring up. That's something we deal with a lot is also how to create a space where kids can express their anger and you can validate that. And even like maybe what that anger makes them want to do, right? Like go hit somebody or something. But then like, how do you help them make different choices with the actual next steps that they take? Um, I also just wanted to bring up for ideas of other potential like pieces of this that could be important, something that we've seen and heard from our youth in Middleton and have invested in is creating one-on-one -on -one time for youth to spend with staff. Because um, we found that as our program grew, that one on those one-on-one -on -one conversations, there just wasn't the space for it anymore. Um, and a lot of that, like exploring behaviors um, and just like you said, Brianna, having these conversations with students and hearing how they're really feeling and thinking about things, you need some one-on-one -on -one time to be able to do that. And I think that's another thing for us all to be um, 
like messaging really well to funders because again that that takes more resources but i think it's really important for actually providing a quality program Yeah, I think that makes, I like that you brought that up because sometimes we tend to want to include as many kids as possible in an activity. And then what ends up happening is we don't, like, you don't get to, you know, certain kids that would actually benefit from that activity. Um, and it, it is frustrating sometimes when you are trying to do something as a group and one kid for one reason or another just doesn't engage and then you have to ask them to you know, find something else to do when you really want to just sit down with that one kid and figure out what's going on, but you can't. Um, so yeah, that's a really good point. Thank you all for coming and for sharing your ideas and engaging in this. Uh, we're just two minutes from our end time and I would love to hear you Am I still with you? Yes. Uh, I would love to hear either out loud or in the chat, uh, just a word or a phrase um, about what maybe you, what you're taking away with, with you. It doesn't have to be something that I shared. Maybe it's from the broader community or something that you came to in the, the breakout room, but what are you leaving with today? I'm gonna start off and I'm all gonna add that I'm just gonna like flip it to somebody and they can either, or, or people are chatting, that's good. Okay, um, good food. Yeah, and just like, yeah. Thought about my middle schooler who was in my house and how much good food matters. So why not in our spaces, yeah. There's good stuff in the chat too, flexibility, reframe new ideas and energy to rethink some things, need for resources about anger, intentional student check-ins, uh, mood meter ideas and emoji check-in and out. Do folks know the mood meter? I know that yet if you go to the Yale social emotional learning site, they've got a really great mood meter, part of their ruler, it's a cool one. Validating the middle school experience, allowing space for play, more flexible structures and youth advisory. Hmm. Yeah, youth advisory came up for us. One-on-one -on -one sessions and mentoring. Sorry, Brianna, I just had my mic off, so I just was reading. <laughs> I'm gonna jump up. That's great, Susan. Yeah, youth advisory, again. Great. Well, it's 11.30, thank you all for coming and feel free to reach out to Susan if you want. Uh, my email address, I'd be happy to be connected. And I'll be just like trimming this recording a bit and then getting slides from Brianna, getting the survey tool from her too, and then sharing that out with the whole network. So you'll get that as well. All right. And I think I'll probably like take our reflection sheet and make a really short one just so people can reflect too. Um, all right. And yeah, these, uh, Stay tuned for the more details about what Nathan was saying. Colleen's gonna share and, and Fred and Mary, uh, Billy Joe. And then there's a couple other ones that are coming out of New York that I'll share that people can attend. And whenever I can get recordings, send those along. Cause I know we'll probably quickly get into summertime when it might be stuff that we're either doing at the end of summer or you know that kind of thing. All right. And so, yeah, just to be sure, um, we're not wrapping up until the end of summer. So I know that uh, I think, Angie, you had thought we were done in June, but we're not going to pull that off. So it'll be more um, finishing up at the end of summer, maybe even a little into September. Um, so that's when stipends will start coming through. OK. All right. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.
Oh, we lost Nathan. I thought he might stay on. How are you feeling? Yeah, no, I'm totally fine. How are you, Susan? I'm good. I'm good. That went well. Oh, I should turn off our recording.